Welcome to Wealth Made Simple with Shaz, where you'll learn how to master your money through business, property, and tax saving strategies. Your host has collectively helped his clients make tens of millions of pounds in additional profits through these strategic approaches to business. Introducing Shaz Nawaz, an award-winning chartered accountant, property tax expert, entrepreneur, and property investor. This week on Wealth Made Simple, we're talking about the essential steps for wealth creation. And we've talked a bit about these steps uh, in different episodes, but we've not really kind of gone into detail in all the different steps. So we've got... uh, a long list uh, which yep. we'll, we'll go through and share with you and I think it's important for anybody listening and viewing to make note of these and then put them into action because yeah. with the best intent in the world Kieran uh, we listen to stuff and say, that's really good that's really useful I must implement that but then we forget about it after a day a week a month uh, and I think writing stuff down and then making sure that you commit to when you're going to do something about it that's the only thing that's going to change your results. Best intent won't change anything. Intention is a great thing. The Followed by action, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but, but yeah, if you've got an idea for the next great product and it only ever stays as an idea, you're never going to make money off of it. No. You're never going to create it. No. You're never going to do any of the thing, any of the steps that you need to do to get into business. But you had a really good idea. And then a few years later, you can guarantee somebody else will have it and you'll see it on the sale or, you know, in a shop or somebody will mention they've picked up this really good ga- gizmo gadget, whatever. And you'll say, yeah, I had that idea. Okay, you had an idea. What did you do with it? Did you take any action? Yeah. No, you took no action. You took no action. I you took no I risk. Would've. I wish I would have. No that. action, no risk, no reward. Simple as that. Simple maths. Yep. And it sounds really harsh, but true. It's true. That, and... and uh, the, I think the important thing about creating wealth is that I always liken it to a messy kitchen. There's a lot going on. There's food everywhere. There's cooking utensils everywhere. Okay, uh, and there's stuff going on. Uh, it's, it's never. You say that like you cook a lot. Uh, there's only one thing I do in the kitchen, Kieran. That's not cook. <laughs> but, but let's leave it there. Let's leave it there. Okay. <laughs> Whereas uh, I do a lot of cooking. Uh, I know you do, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you're, no, you, no you're, you are right. So, sorry, I'm not, I'm not trying to sidetrack. You're a talented man, unlike me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You could cook if you want to. Yeah. Sometimes you try and you think, quit while you're ahead. <laughs> I, 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 I like your version of DIY. <laughs> Don't involve yourself. <laughs> yeah. Well, my wife, as you know, is a very good cook. Very, very good cook. Uh, and then I think if I ever made food for her, uh, she'd be very disappointed. So. <laughs> <laughs> best not disappoint her, right? Best not disappoint her. Best not disappoint her. Uh, so, but it is, it's it's a multifaceted approach uh, which requires planning. Yeah. Just like cooking a really good meal. Uh, and then it requires proper execution. Yes. Uh, and that's not, and I said, I said proper, not perfect. People think it's, it's going to be perfect. Nothing's ever perfect. No. Things go wrong all the time and you've got to improve and enhance and change and adopt. Uh, it's an ever-evolving process. It's iterative. Uh, and then it's continuous learning. Making mistakes, tripping up, hurdles, obstacles, challenges, problems, issues. The concerns. path to success is paved with failure. That's right. If, if, if you get it right all the time, you learn nothing. Yeah. And then and then, then it would be so easy. And everybody would do it. Everyone would do it. Yeah. So, And that's why we're going to say best part of 20 essential steps for wealth creation, uh, which are going to be like a roadmap and a foundation for those people who want to become i'd say sophisticated and intelligent and yeah. smart investors and each step is a building block to get them to the next step yeah and with everything uh in business and in uh, investing it all starts starts with setting clear financial goals yes so wouldn't you agree uh Absolutely. Uh, the thing is, if you've got no nothing to aim for, then what are you working towards? If you say, okay, give you a scenario. If 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 I say, you know, I want to be wealthy. Okay, well done, Kieran. You want you want to be wealthy. It's well, too bleak, isn't it? it, it it's it's very wishy washy. Yeah. It's very very non committal. Yeah. You want to be wealthy. Okay, 
Great. What does wealth look like to you? Okay, if I turn around and say, I want over a million pound in my bank account, and now I've put a number there, that's a lot more concrete. It's a lot more precise. But then you can start breaking it down into chunks. And then you go, okay, so I'm now not going generically, I'm going to be wealthy, so I'm going to do some stuff to make, make me wealthy. No, I want a million pound in my bank account. Okay, how do I put a million pound in my bank account? Well, I need to invest here, make sure that investment pays off. I need to invest smartly. I need to invest wisely. I need to learn how to invest. How I need to return? How have savings? Need to have savings. Need to, Suddenly, you're breaking it down works, into the building network. blocks yeah, that will get money, you there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and so, so your goal is no longer a million pound in your bank account. Your goal is to learn how to put a million pound in your bank account. I think what's really important is a lot of people get bogged down in how. And I think what's important is the what. Yeah. What do I want? Once you've got that, the how will come to you over time. But you've got to start. Yeah. You've got to make a start. But yeah. you've, got, you've got to start with the what. Lao Tzu said the journey of a thousand miles. Begins with a single step. So you've got to take that first step. Yeah. And then the road will open up itself. And, and this, this is the thing that, um, you know, I know you've discovered and I know I've discovered, but over the years... Is all of the information that we cover on this on on this show, everything we say, everything that we look at, everything we've learned, everything we cover, has been covered a hundred times over by a thousand different philosophers over the centuries. Yeah. And I'm and talking it, and centuries. It centuries. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And it all comes back to the same basic principles. So we're not telling anyone anything new here. We're not there is nothing new. We're, we're not reinventing the wheel. Yeah. What we're doing is we're trying to bring to your attention the things that already exist. I think the only new thing, Kieran, is the tools. The tools change. The techniques yeah. are the same when you go back, okay, uh, to even the early 1900s when you had people like Andrew Carnegie, Rockefeller, so on and so yeah. forth, okay, uh, JP Morgan, okay, Tesla. Uh, they were using the same techniques. Okay, as we are today. Well, well, let, let's take it back even further. Let's take it back, say, 5,000 years. Mm. 5,000 years. How, how, did people, how, how did people amass wealth 5,000 years ago? Gold. Mm -hmm. Okay, people still do that today. Yeah. That's not changed. Land. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, the methods of claiming the gold and the land were a little bit more barbaric. <laughs> you know, Different, you, yeah. Yeah, but, but the point is, you didn't become wealthy because... You were nice yeah. and and you didn't yeah. learn anything. You became wealthy because you went and took it. You went and fought for it or you had other people fight and, for it for and you. And you had to fight for you, it today, just in a different way. But, but you know, 5,000 years to the today. The instinct's the same. The instinct's the, the same. different. Yeah. And 5,000 years to, to today, two, two biggest forms of wealth, land, gold. Yeah. Uh, that hasn't changed that much. No, at all. Yeah, that's right. Like you say. The tools have changed, but not a lot else. Yeah. And with those financial goals, I think it, it, it's important to set out what you really want. You know, what kind of income do you want every year? Yeah. What do you want your net net worth to be? Uh, how much time do you want to spend with your family? Uh, how many holidays do you want? What do you want to contribute to your local community? How much do you want to contribute to charity? How much do you want to uh, contribute to yourself, to uh, your family? to your loved ones and how much do you want to dedicate to your own personal belief okay uh, and I think it's setting all of those goals so although we've said financial goals it's your I'd say your family goals spiritual goals financial goals and then your community goals yep yeah which we've talked about in the past when we talked about the wheel of life and, yep you know, having the eight yep. or ten ten important things and and just I mean, some people say I don't know where to start well, just put something down. Yeah. No, 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 no. If, if, if you don't want to start, make your goal. If you don't know, want 20,000 or 30,000 pounds a year, for example, so I'm just making it up, put down 100 grand and say, I'm going to start there. Yeah. I, 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 I would say the first thing you should do is buy a journal. Yeah. Yeah, it costs you a couple of quid. Buy a start journal, writing. start writing in it. Start putting th pen to paper, brain to yeah. words, write things down. 
important, yeah. That that's the that's the first thing. If you do nothing else this year, yeah, and we've got a lot of year left, yeah, to start making changes. But if you do nothing else this year, buy a journal, write in your journal every day. Powerful. Every day. Yeah. And write you you can start off really simply just by writing what happened in to the day and what you're grateful for. What you're grateful for. Write about all the bad experiences that you happened in a day and what you would change your reaction to hindsight. And what you learned from it. Yeah. What you've learned from it. Do, do that for a couple of months. Just see how it goes. And then review. And then review it. Yeah. Then start adding in the goals and where you want to be, what you want to do, how you want to get. Just start, just really light and easy. And I promise you that one thing will change everything. Of course it will. Because you made a start. Yeah. And the second thing I think it is important, and we've again talked about this in the past, is to create a budget. Yes. Track your income, track your expenditure, and then control the unnecessary expenditure uh, and the leakages and the wastage uh, and start channeling that into savings and investments. But Shaz, I, I don't earn enough every month. You know, my bills go out. You know, my money comes in, my bills go out, and I've got maybe 150, 200 pounds left for the, the after bills. You know, ne- es- essential necessities: water, gas, electric. I've got maybe 200 pounds left. That that that's that's my money for living my life. Yeah. Do you do you expect me to become a hermit and do nothing with my life? No. You, I mean, uh, as you know, we've heard that so many times. Yeah. Two things. First thing is when you go through their personal bank statements, you'll find they've got. Expenditure that they don't need to have yeah. all the time. All whether the it's time. A subscription to a channel, whether it's subscribing to a magazine, whether it's some other form of membership. Because I remember we're in this subscription era now. Yep. Uh, so there's always some form of leakage. Number one. Number two. Then okay, you've got your bill, your gas bill, your electric bill, your phone bill. All right. Let's review those and see can we find cheaper providers? Can you do something about them? Yeah. And the answer is yes, unless you're locked into a certain period. Okay. Almost always can. the answer is yes. Yeah. So there's, everybody can find, um, well, we can't, I can't talk about every single person, uh, but most of us have some form of wastage and leakage, whatever it might, it might yeah. be. It might just be ordering takeaways, I'm just saying. Okay, and we can change, the, we can tweak it slightly. See, you can have whatever you want in life, Kieran, as long as you're willing to, to pay the cost. Pay the price. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and that means being uncomfortable. Yeah, then we're going to okay. But yeah, but I like my four holders a year. Well, you might do, but then it's not going to work for you. So you you you've got to give something up to gain something extra. Yeah, that's just the way life works. Yeah, life is a balance. Yeah, and if you overstack one end, it becomes unbalanced. Yeah, you need to maintain that balance. Absolutely. And then and then once you've got the budget, stick to the budget because now you've got a clear uh, kind of set of rules, as you said earlier, boundaries. In terms of this is how much I'm willing to spend on this particular cost, whatever that yeah. might be, or item. And then make sure you, you stick and you're kind of really hard nosed about this and, and stick to it. And you'll soon start seeing that you are going to start accumulating some form of savings. Yep. And I'm talking about the majority here. I'm not talking about every single person. Cause yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I can't but, talk about everybody. Yeah. It's just a, yeah. There, there are exceptions out there. Yeah. There are people who are, yeah. you know. Yeah, who probably don't have anything that they can change, but the majority can, and we have to talk about the majority. Yeah. Uh, and so, and once you've done that, once you've got those savings, and then you start investing, and that's a whole different ball game, which, which we've talked about on other episodes. And as you know, you and I can't give financial uh, investment no. advice because we're not uh, authorized to do so. No. What we can give is information for people to go. go but I mean, even the research. people who have nothing at the end of the month. Because and they can't change anything. Even those exceptions that that we admit are out there, and there's not, nothing you know, there's nothing they can cut back on. There's nothing they are on the cheapest providers they mm-hmm. can, etc., etc., etc. And still, there's more month left than there is money. The money, yes, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, that there are still things they can do, and we will cover those later mm-hmm. on. Yep. Um, but the point the point here is, if there is more month left at the end of the money, and there is truly nothing you can do then it is more imperative that these people listen mm. and implement these changes yeah. more than anyone else. Yeah, because they didn't do the most. Because they're going to benefit the most. Yeah. Absolutely. And 
Then what I think is really important uh, is building an emergency fund. Yes. Yeah. So for a so rainy important. day, and this is for unforeseen expenditure. Could you, you could lose your job. You might need some emergency medical treatment and you can't get it in the NHS because you need it fast and you can't wait. Okay. There's some, some of the family emergency where you need some cash. Yep. Okay. To, to pay for something. Uh, and having that slush fund is incredibly important. And you've got to build it up. And I'll say lock it into a separate account. Okay. Uh, where you can access it. But you, it takes time to access it. Yeah. And I mean, personally, I'll, I wouldn't lock it into a 60, 90 day account, but what, what, what no. I would say is, you know, Maybe have it a seven account. day account. Yeah, yeah. And then take, um, I'm just not going to use this money um, at all unless it's an emergency. List out those emergencies. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I call this a Sant account. Yeah. Save and never touch. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, different for different people. I like to have a year's worth covered in that, in that account. A year, 12 months. Now, I know. So you've got five grand in your account then? <laughs> but and and this is the thing it's not as much as people think it is no because when you say i want a year s- emergency they go okay well your salary is this you're yeah. earning this amount so you've got that much in there and it's like no 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 when i say a year emergency fund i mean i can cover the basics for a year yeah my mortgage or your rent yeah. or your rent for a year, I can cover my gas bill for a year, my electric bill for a year, my water bill for a year. Can't cover TV for a year, yeah, because that's a luxury, yes. in my opinion. So I don't, I don't factor that in. Yeah. You know, I've got money for food each month in there. Yeah. Okay, fine, because I need to eat. Mm-hmm. You know, does that cover my gym membership? No, it does not. Yeah. Does it cover fuel to get to and from work? Yes, it does. Is that obviously? Yeah. It's yeah, but it's so it's not as much as people think it is, and it's not as hard to do as people think it is. The discipline here is what can you live without when you strip everything back and you go, okay, I've lost my job, I'm out of work, I've got or something's come up that's cost X amount and it has impacted all of everything. If I have to go and live on that account, what can I feasibly get rid of? That was interesting. Having had this conversation with numerous people over the years, yep. uh, and some of them obviously are, were doing really well at the time we had this conversation, that, well, I can't make do without X, Y, Z, A, B, C, whatever it might be, okay? Uh, and then they come across this unfortunate situation where they lose their job. Yep. And their partner or their husband or their wife loses their job, okay? Uh, and then they make do with giving up everything that they thought they can't okay live without possibly live without yep and that's when the penny drops for them and they, re- they realize i wish i wouldn't have wasted all that okay money and all those things which i thought i yeah. can't make do without because i'm so comfortable you see the yeah. problem is people want to remain comfortable and still want to uh gain more well, i think that's an oxymoron to some extent it doesn't work it's mutually exclusive Yes. You've got to be uncomfortable to get what you don't have. Right? Yeah. Uh, and you, we have so many examples. We don't need to run through names or businesses. Uh, they're out uh, there, well yeah. noted, well established. But you, you've got to be willing to do what other people aren't willing to do, to have what they don't have. I would rather spend, and you know, this, this is kind of a very quick summary of what you were just talking about. I'd rather spend the next five to ten years really struggling, really uncomfortable, really difficult life to know that the rest of my life is going to be on easy street, yeah. plain sailing. Compared to, yeah, those, those five to ten years, yeah. Because I've set everything up, I've invested wisely, I've got businesses running, I've got redundancies, I've got multiple streams, I've got mm-hmm. you know, backups, I've got savings, I've got all of that. Could take me a decade to do. Okay, I'll spend a decade doing it, because I don't have a choice. Yeah, and I see people, people get this. In a, somebody wants to be a, a doctor, for example, Kieran, okay? They invest so much time, money and effort and years in doing that. Uh, we were t- talking about martial arts earlier. Yeah. Uh, and somebody wants to be a, a black belt or even higher. 
uh, or grand grandmaster, and they spend decades. Um, somebody wants to own a business and make it successful, and, and they understand that they're going to have to spend at least five years, you know, building solid foundations. People get that, but when it comes to wealth creation, for some reason, it's this get rich quick mentality that people have, uh, which stops them from saying, "Oh, I don't want to spend ten years doing this." Well, that's what it takes. Now, this is small baby steps, and we've talked about Warren Buffett many a time, and um, uh, he's, he's a good example. Okay, great example uh, of you know the the small compound difference. Okay, or the, the, the sorry, the difference compounding can make small amounts over makes. a long and sustained period of time. Yep, and that's what it's like. It's slow and painful and long, but it's worth it. Yes, and th- simple as that. We live in a world where everything is disp- fundamentally disposable, and everything is about quick gratification, and. Wealth generation isn't quick. It's not I, for the majority. For I mean, the some majority, might get lucky. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not lucky, but they might have, have an idea which they implement, and it kind of grows very, very quickly, expands. They can scale up, but the, for the majority, it's slow and painful. I mean, think about it. How many people are there in the world? How many millionaires are there in the world? Look at the percentage. It's a very small number. Yep. Because it ain't easy. No. That's why. Yeah. And not everybody's willing to do what those people have done. Simple as that. Yeah, and, and so it is get, that simple. Yeah, to, to get into that league, that club, call it what you like, okay, uh, you, then you need to do th- stuff that you've not been doing in the past. Otherwise, if you're going to... You can't re- do what the masses do. Yeah, otherwise you're going to end up with what the masses get. Yeah. On that note, number four on our list is if people have debt, then pay off the high interest debt. Sounds yeah. obvious, but so many people don't do it. Well... So, interesting, I had this conversation with someone the other day, and their idea of, because there are two types of debt, there is good debt and bad debt in my book, Mm -hmm. Um, and their idea of good debt is completely different to mine. Mm -hmm. Um, Their idea of good debt is if they get a good deal or something's on sale when, and it was something they wanted. To me, that's still bad debt. Mm -hmm. Um. And you're, st- you're still pay- paying a high interest for it. You're still, it's still going to cost you. And it was for something that you just wanted, not needed. It didn't educate you. It didn't. You didn't learn anything from it. I would consider that bad debt. They did not, because in their view, they couldn't afford it right now. So they put it on debt, put it on a credit card, because it's cheap right now. See, the only time I do that, I tell you when, when I do that, Kieran, is let's say if I'm buying a sofa or something else, okay? Yeah. It, and they call it interest-free credit, yeah? Whether it, it is or isn't, or if it's just built in the price, you're going to pay the same amount whether you pay cash today or whether you pay over the next five years. Yeah. That's when I'll spread it over the next five years because I'm not, I'm not paying interest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm, I can use that money elsewhere. Yes. Okay? And I'll make much more Okay, over the next five years, than what I've paid for this particular item, yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, other than that, if I'm buying a TV, for example, I don't want to get it on uh, finance credit, credit card or finance. If I can't afford it, I can't afford it. I yeah, need you to can't wait. afford it. You I don't get wait. it. You yeah. wait. Be be patient and work away towards earning it. Yeah. And you've heard me. I mean, say that when you, when you come to my yeah. house, remember I said, yeah. "Okay, oh, I need that thing here, but right now it's not a priority, and I'll get it later." Like yeah. the coffee maker that I've yes, 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 yes. And some people yeah. are surprised because I'm thinking I've got other more important things to do. Okay, okay, so it's boy, yeah, a two and a half, three grand coffee maker, whatever. Okay, uh, but it's not urgent or important right now. No, it's, yeah. it's, and I could make it happen, but I'm, I'm thinking, well, I'm, I'm going to let something else happen first, and that's going to earn or make enough money to buy this coffee maker, yep. paying off those high interest, high interest uh, debt or finances which is important, and not buying things on finance, which you can't afford, unless it really is some form of interest-free credit, whereby whether you pay cash today or whether you're paying over five years... It makes no difference. The figures are going to be the same. Yeah. It doesn't, you get no discount for paying cash. No. Uh, like when you go to buy a sofa or something like that. Okay. Other than that, if you, if, if you can't 
mean, this is my personal view, by the way, Kieran, you're very different. If you can't afford it, don't, don't buy, buy it. it. You know, don't need an 84-inch TV, do you know what I mean? You just make do with something smaller, it's okay. Um, simple as that. But I need an 84-inch <laughs> TV, Shaz. Well, in that case, my friend, <laughs> carry on. And I'll see you this time next year. And then we'll have a chat and about how, how 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 that plan's working out for that particular person. Uh, 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 and we'll work, we'll work out who's doing better, you or yeah, me. Exactly. Yeah. So, and so the fifth thing that we, we want to share with you is looking for ways to increase your income. Yes. And people always struggle with this. I, I think there is a general mindset of I can't or well, it's easy for you to say or yeah, so many other things that you know, pe- excuses, and they are excuses, and I will not hear anyone say otherwise, they are excuses. It's about, it, it's a matter of what's important to you. You know, if you are struggling to make ends meet, and, you know, I I think that the country and everything has a, a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Um, duty. Duty to look after its its constituents and its people mm-hmm. and to make sure that there is enough to to go around and but ultimately and this is a big thing that comes slightly later on or stuff is take accountability oh that's massive isn't it you know and responsibility you know your income is your responsibility okay Oh, but I don't have the qualifications or the education to do any other job than the job I've got. And the job I've got pays minimum wage. A minimum wage doesn't cover me for, you know, living. Okay. All right, all right, fine, 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 fine. Do, do, do you have a, you know, you know, your Sky subscription and things like that? Well, okay, that's 60, 70 quid a month you could save for a start. But assuming that you are on, you know, you are one of those people who is on bare minimum, you pay for all your bills, and then once your bills, your necessary bills are out, you're done, and you're telling me that you can't get any other work, you can't get... Do you have any free time? Do you have any downtime? If if the answer to that question is yes, any time at all, then telling me that you can't earn more money is an excuse. Make better use of it. Because there is going to be something you're good at, whether it's your current job, whether it's your current role... You know, could you, for example, if you're, uh, uh, Kieran and Shaz, it's easy for you to say, I've got, I've got no qualifications, I left school early, and I, I'm trying to think of a job that won't insult people when I say it, yeah. but it probably is going to insult someone, so I apologise. There are, you know, but I'm going to use cleaner, janitor. Yeah. Okay, so you've got a job as a janitor at, say, a school, doesn't pay very well. I don't know if it does or it doesn't. I have no you know, knowledge of this whatsoever, so I'm just using it as an example. Okay, cool. That's, it's a respectable job. Could you set yourself up as a cleaner privately? Yeah. You know, you, fin- you finish your job at the school or wherever it is you do your cleaning. You then go to people's houses and get paid a respectable amount to privately clean. You've already got the experience. You've done, you know, however long cleaning. Or you're good with computers. Could you do something online? Yeah, but yeah. even s- sticking to your cleaning analogy or story is, could you sell cleaning equ- equipment door to door in a market store, a car boot sale, online? Okay, because most people don't know what the best cleaning materials are, yeah. and there's just demand for that. Okay, and you obviously know because you're a cleaner, uh, and like I said, that's a respectable job, just yeah. like any other job. Uh, and I, I respect anyone that does any work. Absolutely, working itself yeah, is respectable. Is legally, of course, and uh, the, you can show people how to clean. Okay, uh, around the house. Okay. Uh, which gives them a better finish. Yep. Could you start a TikTok that yeah. monetizes TikTok, the cleaning hacks that I've learned over X amount of yeah. years cleaning? My the the point here is not you know become a cleaner and then you know 
market yourself out and build build a business. George Bernard Shaw, the Irish playwright, came and said, "The possibilities are numerous or endless once you decide to act and not react." Yes, you got to take that step of you and yeah. do it. But th- the kicker here is that it's going to be in your own time. You're going to have to give your time to make this happen. And that's what a lot of people don't that's want to do. That's the consequence, isn't it? That's the consequence. That's the, that's the balance. That's the exchange. It's going to cost you time. But you know what? You could also go and educate people. Yeah. But it still costs you time. But if you want to grow wealth, increase your income, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost something. It's not free, I'm afraid. Um, you know. Number six uh, is making sure that you have a saving plan. And that again, you're dogmatic about it. And this uh, this saving plan is separate from your save another touch that we discussed earlier. Yeah, it's completely different. It's mm. a separate account. This is your savings for a rainy day, savings yeah. for fun, yeah. savings for a holiday, something like that. This isn't your I need to live savings. Yes, two different things. And I think it's important to distinguish the two. I think it's T. Harvecker uh, who talks about this uh, in his book. Uh, when he talks about money and there's others as well uh, who talk about this in terms of having different jars and pots. Yes. And this, these could be bank accounts or physical jars where you put money for different things and you make sure that, that you build them up and so you can pay for those things, whatever those things might be. Yep. And, yeah. the th- I, and I use the word things uh, and keep it kind of vague and general because everybody has different priorities. Yep. So I don't want to say you should, do, you should be doing this, that, the other. But it, in terms of savings, investments, the basics, okay, uh, your income expenditure uh, should have separate jars. Yes. Uh, or pots, which is important. Yep. Uh, and I, next, understand your risk tolerance. Yep. Now, there are, there are some strategies out there that, that you can, you know, go, go on Google and understand for yourselves um, that are high risk, high reward. Yep. Uh, <coughs> uh, no, absolutely, me. and yeah, and uh, I excuse mean, me. If you're willing to take a high risk, uh, then the reward will be higher, but the exposure to loss is also higher. So it just depends on your and, personal. And these attitude. are generally the scenarios where you'll hear people say, "Oh, it's easy for you. You've got money. It takes money to make money." In high risk, high reward, yes, it does. I completely agree. If you're going to invest, say, £10,000 in a high-risk investment and the payoff is, you know, a million pounds, high-risk, high-reward. But... Are you talking about Saturday night? (laughs) But if you can't afford to lose that money, then that risk is probably too high for you. Don't do it. Don't do it. So suddenly that... Ten thousand pound that we're talking about is is far too much, mm-hmm. far far too much. Too high a risk, not worth it. So yes, in that regard, it is high risk, high reward. If you put it in and it worked, yeah, great. I, you'd be a millionaire very quickly. But can you afford to? And that that's the that's the thing with risk. If you, the answer is no, then you can't afford to take the high risk. Because it impacts you directly, it impacts your house, it impacts your home, it impacts your livelihood, whatever. And the opposite is also true, not in this particular scenario, is when you're kind of clear on certain things, can you afford not to? Yes, yeah. Not, I mean, obviously, in, in, in terms of high-risk investments, because they're not for everybody. No, they're not. And I would I say to people, uh, if you can, aff- like I said, you know, if you can afford to lose £5,000... Okay, but the upside is you might make fifty thousand or hundred thousand. But 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 if that five grand goes and it, it's not going to bother you whatsoever, uh, apart from from farmers thinking that that was a bad choice that I made at the time. Maybe I, maybe I should have done something different. Other than that, know the consequence, then do it. But if 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 it's anything more than that five minute uh, conversation with yourself, yeah, okay, inconvenience. Don't do, don't do it. Inconvenience. Yeah. yeah. Then don't do it. Don't do it. No, I, I completely it's agree. It's not worth it. I mean, th- 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 those are sort the sorts of investments that I won't make. You know, yeah, they're not for me. Well, you, you'll do it. You do it on a smaller scale. Yeah, uh, and obviously that scale is different for everybody, depending on on, yeah. on their own attitude and, and the amount of cash that they have. Yeah, and my favourite one next. Go for it. 
Um, your boots. That, well, this, this, ta- is prob- this, is, this is the most important. Yes. I know we say that about most things, but this really is the most important. And this ties exactly into what you just said. Can you afford not to? The answer here is no for everyone. Yep. Invest in your financial education. Understand what money is, understand where it comes from, understand how it works, understand yeah. how it flows. If that's going to cost you a couple of hundred quid to learn, it is money well spent. 100%. It will always be money well spent. And I cannot stress that highly enough. It's not just for bankers and investors and accountants and yeah, entrepreneurs and businessmen. It's for everybody. Every, if everybody had financial literacy... And a good understanding of finances, they would be in a much better place. I think many people have said it in the past as well, and it's, it's well noted that education, investing in education, pays you the best and the highest return. Yes. Yeah. And th- that is, you know, uh, as true as anything. Yeah, really is. From my own experience on yours and, uh, and other people's. So once you've invested in financial education and, yeah, and you, you've got knowledge and knowledge is power and you're, you're ready to make those investment choices, uh, then the next thing is to make sure you invest in a diversified portfolio. Yes. Do not put all your eggs in one basket. No. Because that one basket which is good today might be very bad tomorrow. Eggs go off over yeah, time. Exactly. Uh, and when you're investing eggs, Sometimes, if you want to make an omelette, you've got to crack a few. And that's fine. Crack yeah. them. Uh, but make sure that you spread your uh, portfolio over different investments, be it obviously stocks, bonds, shares, real estate, crypto, okay, uh, property, buying other businesses or investing in other businesses, investing in other people. Okay? Yeah. Uh, spread it across as many uh, different types of investments as you can, okay, with the highest amount of being in the one that you're most comfortable with in terms of return, risk, so on and so forth. Uh, but do not make, put okay, all your uh, chips on one particular number because if yeah. that goes sour, you had it. Yep. And the, th- the thing with that is you've also got to bear in mind that you know, we're not talking thousands of pounds here. You know, some of these investments cost very, very little. Mm-hmm. You know, some of these investments can be very, very expensive, sure. But start small and grow. Take a long-term view. Yeah. But, with it, and unfortunately, the world that we live in today, as you said earlier, Kieran, is instant gratification. Nobody wants jam tomorrow. No. Everybody wants it today. And success leaves clues. It takes time. It takes time. Always takes time. 20, 20 year overnight success, 30 year overnight success, so on and so forth. Yeah. Okay. It takes time. Yeah, I mean... And perseverance and patience. You, you've been in business, what, 20, 20, 22 years now? Yeah. 21 years, yeah. My 22nd year. Yeah. Yeah. And and your first year, that was, that was all gravy, right? You, you made loads... You made all your money oh, in that yes, first year. Oh, yes, I made year. all my money. At the end of the first year... Uh, I bought, and so did my business partner, I bought a brand new BMW M3. <laughs> because I'd made so much money. Like heck I had. Uh, <laughs> I, I got the car on finance because I, I always wanted a BMW M3. And I thought, uh, if I buy the car and get it on finance, and I'm paying a, a certain amount, it's then going to... Incentivize you. Incentivize me, force me, focus me to make that extra money to pay for the car. And you know what Kieran did? If so that it, worked for it you? It worked for me. It worked for me. Okay. And every month I was paying the car off. Okay. Uh, and so was my, my business partner. And we had uh, a huge amount of fun. Uh, and we made it work. But That's the last car. You first last bought. car I ever got on finance. Yep. Yeah. I haven't done it since. Because they depreciate. So why buy them? Yeah. Let somebody else take that risk. Yeah. Okay. But we've covered that on obviously other episodes but yeah so uh, spread your investments over uh, different uh, portfolios and you obviously t- talked about long term investments yeah it takes time slow takes compound time. returns just over let it build years. up let it let build, it build up. up 
just forget about it and go back to it in 5, 10, 15, 20 years' time. You'll have a nice surprise. A bit like a pension. Yes. You worked for 25 years and just contributed 15, 20 pounds a month to their pension. Over 25 years, there's a nice big lump sum there. Okay. It's not as big. Mine's not as big as I want it to be. Yeah, well, you've got to make sure that you wait a bit longer, Kieran. <laughs> or invest more into it. One or the other. Yeah. Yeah. Or buy more property. Yep. Okay. And as you know, my favorite one uh, of, of all time is leverage. Yes. And here you've, you, I know you want to talk about leveraging something else, but I think just generally leverage okay, oh, uh, is huge. Is, is, is the single biggest game changer. Leveraging other people's time, your time, money, expertise, expertise okay, uh, resource, network, opportunities, so on and so forth. Is huge. I mean, you want to move that massive boulder, you can push that boulder and, you know, struggle and, you know, and you, probably never be able to probably move never, it. never be able to move it. Or you can get a big, thick stick that's able to withstand the weight of the boulder, yeah. put it on a yeah. pivot point, yeah, um, and leverage. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Directly leverage yeah. it. Yeah. And, uh, and I hear you want to talk about ices and sips in terms of pensions and sasses and that kind of stuff and they're, they're all fantastic as well but I think that the main important the main point, point is leverage is leverage yeah I think, I think and the more experience you have and the more uh, contacts you have the bigger your network uh, the, the bigger your net worth uh, the more sophisticated you are okay the more leverage that you'll have automatically without yes. knowing and yeah and when you start, start implementing it and uh, you become consciously aware of it, okay, uh, you'll, you'll really be able to do a lot because you've got the reputation, you've got the credibility, you've got the track record, uh, so you have something to offer. But even somebody who's starting off, uh, from scratch, you also have leverage because you have time and somebody else has Might money. Not. Yep. So they don't have the time. So you can leverage your time, okay? Against with, their money. Exactly. And then that's it. And, see, and, and Match on, made in heaven. And on top of that, um, is if this is if you if you are the person without the money but with the time, don't get yourself caught up in this idea that this business venture that you want to go into or this this investment that you want to have is is strictly fifty fifty. Because and I think that this is a mistake I have seen a lot of people make is they're going in with their time and potentially their expertise and somebody else is supplying the finance and they're going in going, yes, well, you know, I'm, I'm providing time and, and effort and expertise that they're, they're only prof only providing money. So it should be at least 50, 50, right? And my response to that is no, absolutely not. Yeah. Cause the thing is, and it sounds really harsh, but if they want to do that deal, with somebody else that also has time and expertise, they can find someone else with time and expertise. Yeah. How many other people can you find with the money? Money's harder to come by. So, especially when you're starting off, yeah. Especially, yeah, when you start, when you're a little more sophisticated and you've got it, it's yeah. it's a lot easier. Then you got a few more opportunities, yeah. But initially, it's a lot harder. Mm -hmm. So if somebody says to you, "Okay, we'll do that deal," but it's 70-30, 80-20. All right, I'd rather have twenty percent. Of a large pie than 100% of a tiny pie. So don't get it in your head that just because you've got the time and the expertise or you're supplying them, it's not always. 5% of 100 grand current is a lot more than 100% of nothing. Yeah. Yeah, it, exactly. Yeah, it's a simple equation. Yeah. And that's uh, about being smart and taking your ego out of the situation. Yeah, and thinking, I just need to, uh, and it's, I just, we've talked about it before, whether you call it entry fee, whether you call it entry tax, that is part of your entry tax, the time that the you spend and the mistakes you make and the lessons you learn and, yeah. the, and, the, and the equity that you give away for just getting your step on the ladder. Yes. Simple. Uh, and, you know, uh, if, you're, if you're willing to do that, you're going to be more successful. Yes. Period. Full stop. You know, end of uh, the, the matter. Because we've seen it, you know, you know how, how both have seen this. Uh, people do this many a time. Yep. Because they, they look at the bigger picture. 
and it and it makes you more approachable. It makes people yeah. want to work with you more because you're more more you're more likely to acquiesce their request. You tend to because most people are more, I'm not doing that. No, I want fifty percent. Well, take twenty twenty percent and do one or two deals and then build your own cash and then you're now in the position where you can have eighty percent and give somebody else twenty percent. Yeah, and for that, isn't it? Uh, and obviously, and I, told you, I think that's extremely important. And also, it's important to review your financial plan regularly. Yes. I don't mean once a year. I would say do it monthly. Yeah. Okay. I do mine quarterly. Yeah. Do it monthly and see where am I this month? Next month, quarter, so on and so forth. Uh, and the more times you do it in a year, the more op- opportunity you're giving yourself to succeed. Yes. Do it once a year. If it hasn't happened, it hasn't happened. If you do it once a quarter, you give yourself four opportunities. To once change month, the direction. You give 12 opportunities, okay? Uh, and you, you can do it weekly as well, but I think weekly is kind of too soon. Yeah. But there are certain things you can, you can track weekly, but your financial plan, I'll say, look at this monthly. What what return have I had? Is my money working the hardest for me? What if I invested a bit more here? What would happen? What if I invested somewhere else? Well, what, what would happen? And kind of tracking all, all of that stuff. Uh, some people might find that boring, but once you've got enough data, it is interesting. Yeah. Because... It's money in your back pocket. So, and with that, the next one, Kieran? Uh Protect your wealth. Um, and I, this is kind of done for you in some regards, in some institutions. Um, but in others, it's really, really not. And, you know, you, you, hear on, you, you hear on the radio all the time, you know, your finances may be at risk, your home may be at risk, blah, 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 is a risk. And this ties in with your risk tolerance, yeah. But take a baseline and protect what you've got. And you can look into all the products that are out there that do this. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not qualified to go through any of them, so I'm going to... Speak to yeah, somebody who yeah, is, yeah. Sp- suggest you speak to someone who is. Number 15 then, Kieran, out of 20, uh, is automate your finances, and um, especially your savings. Yes. So invest... On a regular basis, set up a direct debit, a standing order, and just let the money build up and don't compromise that. Keep that going as it is. That's important. Number 16, which is your and my favorite, invest in property and real estate. We've yep. covered that on many different episodes and we'll cover that in the future. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, property is, uh, we owe so, so much to property. Okay. Yes. Yes. It's changed our lives. And there's yet so much more to come. Uh, number 17 is explore passive income streams. Okay. Uh, so you can get money while you sleep, and it, although it's not never that simple, it's, it's never that simple. Nearly as simple, but yeah, okay, it is important. Number nineteen, join an, a network, an association, or a group of like-minded people. Uh, have a mentor. Join mastermind groups. Yep. Find yourself with people who Educate you yourself. want to be like. Educate yourself, which we've already covered previously. Yep. And the most important uh, well, of the, all, you skipped eighteen. List, now. You skipped eighteen. Have I? Yeah. Oh, is, I have. You did. I have. Seek professional advice. And we say this a lot. We, yeah. do, we do say this a lot, and it is true. The thing is, with professionals, you know, when, you, when, when you get to know them, they become part of your network. When they become part of your network, they become part of your friendship circle. Mm-hmm. Once, they're in, once they're part of your circle, they also become your mentors. And your mentor and your friend become one of the same thing. Yeah. And suddenly... And they open doors for you as well. That there's a whole different thing going on there because now your mentor is putting you in front of people or willing to help you with X, Y, or Z. Massive difference. Huge. And number 20, stay committed and patient to wealth creation because it's a marathon and not a sprint. Yep. So plan the dive and then dive the plan. Yeah. No point doing anything else and don't do not deviate. Okay. It's... Hard. It's a long, windy road, ups and down, peaks and troughs. Okay, and it's gonna it, ebbs it, and flows. Th- things that you don't expect are gonna happen yeah. are gonna happen. That's right. And how you deal with them is gonna determine how you how you the succeed. Come on, how you succeed. And it's not about the destination. We've all heard it before. It's about the journey and what you become. Grow, on that develop, improve yourself. Journey. That's right. Thanks for listening to Wealth Made Simple. You can follow and contact Shaz on the Facebook pages Entrust Property Tax and The Profits Wizard. You can also find Shaz on LinkedIn, YouTube and Instagram. Alternatively, email him at shaz at aa-accountants.co.uk. Build your wealth by mastering money.